Hey, we're back with Advent of Vim 2025. This is day four. On day one, we learned about opening Vim. On day two, we started with the G commands, part one. Yesterday was day three. We had even more G commands. And today we're going to cover even more G commands. There are so many. I hope I got my key casting fixed, by the way. Uh, let's switch to the terminal here. Yeah, there seems to be something here. Let's uh, try the colon. Colon was also, yeah, okay. So this should work fine. Thanks for all the reminders from you. Thank you. All right, then just let's get started. Let's see what we got here, what we're working with. So a little elf, Santa's elf here helped me create these files. I haven't really looked into them. So let's explore together what, what it produced. Let's start a Vim here with elf code review as the first file we we're going to use. So the first two G commands I want to cover here are G star or G asterisk and G hash. Maybe you know star. Let, let me go on this word here, elf, and press the star. And you see on the bottom here, this search term appeared. It's the word elf, and it got some special characters around it. These characters are actually word boundaries. So these word boundaries make it so that we just get exact matches for a search term here. So elf is probably not a good example here because I can't think of a longer word starting with elf right now. So let's uh, use something else. But you know what? Let's, let's just create some words starting with elf, even if they don't exist in the English language or something like that. So let's use elven, even if this is spelled wrong. And I don't know, let's do something like telft, whatever. You get the idea. Let's uh, jump back to the top of the file here and go back to the to the elf word here. You press asterisk again and see what happens. So let me re-enable highlight search again and press the asterisk again. You see elven or elven and telft, these two words don't match with with these word boundaries here. If we now go on, oh I clicked this word, sorry for that. <laughs> No mouse navigation allowed, right? Uh, if we now use G asterisk, you see these words also match. So if you don't want to just search for exact matches from, from words under your cursor, you can use G star. And you get all words that have the words under your cursor as a part. Let's jump to words down here, to search results. And now let's press hash. This works the same way as asterisk, just the other way around. Let's jump back to the to the other word here and just use g hash and we get these two imaginary words in our search results again you can also look at the search term down here now it's with the question mark because we search backwards but it doesn't have any word boundaries anymore so these were the first g commands covering today before we go on with the next command i just want to say thank you thank you for all the people commenting and watching these videos also sharing them. The first one actually publicly sharing a video of mine, at least the first time I got some kind of notification about this was Richard Zabo. I hope I didn't butcher the name completely. And he actually <laughs> hyped it, what is really great, and also shared day three of Advent of Vim. So thank you especially for that. All the other people commenting, liking, hyping, and sharing these. Thank you very much. Also, the subscriptions are rising. So this really makes me happy, and it seems like you like the stuff I post right now. Thanks again for that. And then let's go on with the next commands. Okay, I don't really like this file very much. Let's open up another one here. Uh, let's go with North Pole Incident. Okay. Okay, this file doesn't really fit for my next uh, example either, but let's just create some lines that, that fit for that. So I don't know, then let's, let's just duplicate this line here a few times and just insert this just so that we have some, something to work with here. But let's say I'm in the middle of the line here and I want to change the beginning of the line. I want to go jump directly to the beginning of the line and be in insert mode and type away. So you probably know about capital I. This takes you to the beginning of the line and directly into insert mode, right? Let's try this out here. So capital I. Okay, this jumped me to the first non-white space character in this line and I can type away here, right? Let's escape out of the insert mode again. What if I wanted to start in column one? I can press G capital I and this 
always takes me to the real beginning of the line, even if there are non-visible characters there. So if you want to jump to the beginning of the line, directly into insert mode, G capital I is your friend here. So now that we've done this very, very sophisticated edit in some foreign language, maybe it's Elvish, I don't know, or it's Colmac-ish because <laughs> I just pressed random things on my, on my Colmac DH layout here. Uh, now that we've done that, let's jump a few paragraphs down. And now let's say we wanted to jump directly to our last edit we made directly into insert mode. This is handled by G lowercase i. So I press G lowercase i and I'm put into insert mode directly at the place of my last edit. Very handy, right? Reminds me of the GV we covered yesterday. Okay, I'm tired of having surprises opening files I didn't open before. So let's just create a new file ourselves here. Let's just create a secret wishlist or something like that. Wishlist MD. And let's say this is our, our very secret wishlist. And we have a list here with items we want to we wanna get, but we don't want anyone else but Santa to know what's on this list. So maybe you just have a Mac, but you always wanted to run Linux on bare metal or something like that. And maybe try out some big LLMs, local models, and maybe you need like a framework. I can't type again. <laughs> a framework desktop for that, right? With 128 gigs of RAM, right? So the so the max max configuration here. Yeah, so this is on your wish list, but you don't want anyone to know but Santa. Or maybe framework, if they watch this video here and want to sponsor me and send me a framework desktop. Maybe I should also leave some kind of business contact address somewhere so that people can contact me actually. Yeah, I will do that today, I think. Let's say this is such a big wish, so it's enough for our wish list. Yeah. Now we can use a secret encryption algorithm that only Santa and you know. So it's called ROT13. It's the safest thing on earth. It's very secure. So <laughs> to automatically encrypt your line here with ROT13, you can use G question mark question mark. And now nobody but Santa will understand what's written here. Okay, maybe no one but Santa because he knows the code and also maybe someone knows that if you apply ROT13 again, that this actually reverses the encryption here. So, but the G command was G question mark for that. G question mark question mark to apply it to the whole line. I guess you can also have like a visual selection and make G question mark. And yeah, this works also for selections like that or probably every motion like like the other commands we already covered like g question mark word yeah so for keeping secrets route 13 g question mark so for the next g command i want to show you let's create a new tab here this time manually not like in the opening vim episode let's do a tab new now we've got two tabs here and we could do all sorts of things here like Writing here like like and subscribe, whatever. This is just a new buffer and a new tab, right? Or let's I don't know, do something like github.com slash m plus p. To switch between these tabs, I also briefly mentioned it in the first video, but I got a comment under one of the last videos that mentioned GT and G capital T. So I want to show you this again here. So go to normal mode again and then G capital T and GT, which is back and forth between these tabs. And also it goes around all the tabs. If we have like another one here, a new tab, uh, we can use GT and it wraps around, you see, like that. Or G capital T goes to the left tab. We also already covered the GF command that jumps to files based upon the file name under the cursor. There's another very similar command that won't work in the setup we've got here because I'm actually running in a, inside a container here. So I'm going to create a new window here and just start up Vim outside of this container. So this is running on my local machine here. And I'm just going to type out another URL here. Let's, let's do again github.com slash m plus p. If I can finally type my name, I don't know. <laughs> and now if I press gx, it will open up my 
external browser and open the file right inside the browser. Oh, by the way, also there's a gist on GitHub with the vimrc file, the actual vimrc file I'm using inside this video series, series for this video series. I'm going to paste a link below this video also so that you can check it out. There are some, some options. Most of them are just like the default NeoVim settings that NeoVim brings with it. And just the tokenite color scheme I manually added here and a few remaps here. So maybe you want to use this if you want to follow along my videos here and want to have the exact same setup. It's, it's not really much configuration. It's just these simple settings. But maybe it's uh, helpful for someone to just have the same configuration file here. I actually got the idea to upload this VMRC from the comment under one of the, the previous day's videos. So thank you for that. Let's jump back to the terminal and do something else. I'm going to close this window again here and go back here inside the container. What I want to show you is if you use help index, and I'm going to make this my only window here so that you can see more. You see there's an, an overview about many, many, many commands. The help is really helpful. Wow, help is helpful. <laughs> That's great. Inside this index help file, there's a great overview about all sorts of commands for all the different modes. So if you want to see what's possible, scroll through this file here. You can also jump to certain tags or search for, for stuff. I think there's something with commands starting with G. And there you can find all sorts of other commands starting with G. We didn't cover everything here, but uh, here's a list of all the commands that are available that's starting with G. If you still haven't got enough of those, this will be the last G commands video for now, at least. Please feel free to poke around here yourself and try them out. So I got to run. I'm recording this after work on Wednesday and I still have to get something to eat and play a little bit with my, my little one. And after that, I'm going to do a live stream. So I'm going to cut it short here. I hope you had fun. You know, all the things. I told you in all the videos before with the hyping, the liking, the subscribing. I really appreciate all of you who liked, subscribed, commented, hyped, or even became members. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope to see you again tomorrow or in the live stream that was happening yesterday. If you watch this on real day four, <laughs> so uh, hope to see you around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. See you around and take care.